Hello and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we analyse a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Today we will be taking a look at the Dagda mercenary, Shamir. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. Shamir is a faculty member who must be recruited in order to add her to your roster. For all three houses, this can be done from chapter 6 onwards, however if you opt down the silver snow path with the black eagles, she will automatically join on chapter 12 if you didn't pick her up already. As is the case with most faculty members, Shamir's only recruit requirement is based on Byleth's level and varies with Byleth's support rank with the character, which can be seen on screen now. This should usually be something that is attained without too much trouble, building supports with Shamir should not be anything that's problematic, and with Byleth being a very potent early game unit who also benefits from a personal ability giving them an extra 20% EXP, they should maintain a very reasonable level to be able to recruit Shamir on Chapter 6. One of the bigger flaws Shamir has is that she is amongst the more absent units in the game. Due to her Chapter 6 recruitment, she is obviously unavailable for the first five chapters. She also misses Chapter 7, as this is limited to only students, as well as Chapter 10, where she's missing due to plot reasons. On all routes other than Crimson Flower, she also does not arrive for Chapter 13. This is unfortunate since ideally you would want her contributing to your team during these missions, and some of these, notably Chapter 5, are ones where you would really benefit from having her around, however she is still an extremely valuable asset when she is able to be used. Shamir's personal ability is Survival Instinct, which increases Strength, Speed, Dexterity and Magic by 4 until the next player phase begins when she initiates combat and secures a kill. I feel like this is an aspect of Shamir's kit which is very easy to overlook, however it can hold a fair bit of value. When you first recruit Shamir at Chapter 6, she does have the capacity to enemy phase to a certain extent, since she is a powerhouse for the point of the game you will be at. The chapters around this time facilitate this well too. Not too many units can enemy phase effectively at this point, so being able to do this holds a certain amount of exclusivity. It's not an ability that holds its usefulness too well as the game progresses, although gaining access to Dancer does let you use the bonuses for a second attack on the player phase to eliminate a unit you otherwise may not have been able to, and for the early game it is very nice. Shamir does not possess any crests. This means that relic weapons or equipment will deal 10 damage to her when used and she does not gain any effect that a crest may provide. This isn't too big of a concern as these effects are rarely too impactful and the extra damage she takes just isn't particularly a big deal. Before we look at Shamir's stats and skills, it is important to remember that she joins as a level 11 unit at the earliest, as opposed to level 1 like most units. She also joins as a sniper. Being an advanced class, this is usually unavailable until level 20, which makes having it at level 11 extremely valuable. The class brings a lot to the table, which we will look at in more detail shortly, however the core thing to look at for now is it brings a lot of stat advantages. Shamir is relatively minimalist on the skills front. She has boons in lances and bows, and a bane in faith. This works out just fine, it's not a massive spread, but honestly it does the job it needs to do. A bows is an insane benchmark to join with at this point in the game, and grants her early access to high level prowess skills, some useful combat arts, and great weapon availability. Starting at such a high base whilst joining so early also makes her one of the only units who has a reasonable chance of reaching S plus for the fair skill in a reasonable time frame. The one thing to note about Shamir here is that she is often cited as being a very low investment unit, and this is absolutely true and something we will get more into later. For the most part this is a positive thing, however there is a point to be made about the fact that she gets very little in the way of strong abilities or combat arts from her actual skills herself. From a statistical perspective, she mostly just has sniper bases along with its class modifiers, however she has them at level 11, not level 20. This is incredibly good, 18 strength and 14 speed puts her in a very good spot, and 12 defense is the equivalent of units who have certified for armor knight to get its base stats, so she will be amongst your bulkiest units too. The main areas where she differs from sniper's bases are dex and luck, where she is drastically above them. On their own, these are typically considered dump stats, less valuable than many others, but with her excelling so hard in both of these areas, it gives her a massive boost to her crit, as they are both used in the calculation, which is a constant asset throughout the game. 
Her base growths of 55% in both of these areas, up to 75 and 65% by her sniper class, help this to continue to improve throughout the game. One final thing relating to Shamir's stats is that she has a might support with Catherine and the two have the capacity to reach an A rank. This can be very beneficial, so if you are not utilising Catherine, using her as Shamir's adjutant to get this bonus is a great idea. From a statistical point of view, that's all that really matters with Shamir, so let's take a look at utilising her in the game. With her joining at Chapter 6 in an advanced class, she makes an immediate strength upgrade to basically any team. She is also one of the very few units with access to a fair skill at this time, in this case Bowfair, which she gets innately as a class skill in Sniper. Bowfair gives her an additional 5 damage for every attack using the relevant weapon type. This is an extremely valuable damage boost that really helps her stand out amongst your other units at this point. So what can you do with her? Well, let's get the simplest option out of the way first. If all you want to do is keep Shamir and Sniper, get Hunter's Volley, and basically nothing else, honestly that's completely fine. One of Shamir's biggest perks is that she can basically be as low investment as you want her to be, including no investment at all, so if you find you have basically no resources to spare but want to add some more power to your roster, that's absolutely viable. Personally though, I don't think Shamir needs much help to go from being very good to being excellent, and this is worth doing, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The first priority after recruiting Shamir is getting Hunter's Volley. This is a combat art which guarantees two consecutive attacks with a range of 2 to 3, as well as providing a boost to Might, Crit, and Accuracy. To get this, you just need to master the Sniper class, which as previously mentioned, Shamir joins in. Hunter's Volley is an excellent combat art at any stage of the game, but the opportunity to get it as early as Shamir does is incredibly unique, since any other unit won't gain access to Sniper until level 20. Like I said when discussing Survival Instinct, Shamir is a viable enemy phase unit during this stage of the game. Just make sure you kill something on the player phase to trigger Survival Instinct, and that she has a way to counter melee enemies, either the close combat ability or a Retribution Gambit being used on her. Making use of this can be extremely useful in helping her master Sniper quickly, since she will participate in significantly more combat each turn. Of course, the Saint statue buff for Class Mastery will also be a huge help here. Of course, this also has the benefit of letting her contribute significantly to missions. Very few units can enemy phase this early on, especially not to Shamir's level of effectiveness. Outside of her own personal development, Shamir is a massive asset to you at this point in time doing this. Once Shamir masters Sniper, she is essentially in a position to take out any threat you need her to for a good portion of the game. You can basically just click Hunter's Volley on anything you want dead, and it will be, with a very high crit rate to see off the few things that are too bulky. So what is next from here? Well, there are two very useful skills gained from mastering intermediate classes which Shamir can greatly benefit from. The first of these is Hit plus 20, which is gained from mastering the Archer class, and provides an additional 20 hit to all attacks performed by the unit. Shamir comes with access to the Archer class, so all that's needed to get this is to master it. The other skill is Death Blow, which grants plus 6 might whenever the unit initiates combat. This is obtained by mastering the Brigand class. To qualify for Brigand, Shamir will need D plus axes to be able to gamble the promotion with a C guaranteeing it. This is not a high requirement at all, and is very easy to reach. I've seen a lot of conversation and discussion about how early you can pick these up, and that you can have both by the Chapter 8 mission. Whilst this is all well and good, I actually don't think this is optimal. Shamir doesn't need these abilities early on, and taking her out of Sniper to pick them up and losing access to things like the classes in 8 Bowfair and Hunter's Volley, things which are extremely unique to her at this point in time, makes her significantly weaker and your party weaker as a result. Deathblow is compensated for by Bowfair, as well as the additional might from Hunter's Volley, alongside Shamir's high weapon ranks allowing her to use the best equipment available. Hit plus 20 is made up for by Hunter's Volley's plus 15 hit, alongside the higher accuracy provided by the high level prowess skill that other units will not have at this point. Getting these abilities early is nice in theory, but it doesn't actually make Shamir much stronger early on because she is already strong enough and actually will drag down her performance as Archer and Brigand are significantly weaker than Sniper. Now you will want both Deathblow and Hit Plus 20 at some point, but because of this I don't think it's necessary to prioritise picking them up early. I personally find it better to just keep Shamir and Sniper until you're in a better position to pick these up. 
As for what a better position is, I personally like to wait until you're approaching the end of part 1, around chapter 10 or chapter 11 to be precise. This is for a couple of reasons. Firstly and most importantly, the gap in power between Shamir and your other units will have narrowed significantly during this time. Other units will have been reaching level 20 and started to enter advanced classes of their own, including Sniper, and so this advantage is now less unique to Shamir. These units will also have access to these intermediate mastery skills themselves, so may even surpass Shamir at this point. Another advantage of waiting is that in Chapter 8 you will gain access to the Knowledge Gem, which means that significantly less time needs to be spent in these intermediate classes in order to master them since it doubles the amount of class EXP per battle. Now, obviously moving into an intermediate class at a later stage in the game would stand to be more of a disadvantage, which is why my preferred way to master these classes is to use Shamir as an adjutant. This is particularly effective if you attach her to an enemy phase unit, Dimitri is particularly ideal for this at this point in the game, so that she can once again benefit from multiple combats per round. This is also why we opt to do this around chapter 10 or 11, since you will likely still have access to paralogues at this time. You don't actually need these skills until around mid part 2, but during the final chapter of part 1 and early in part 2, paralogues are often not able to be done, so there are less training opportunities, particularly if you tend not to participate in auxiliary battles. By doing this, it should only take a couple of maps for both Deathblow and Hit Plus 20 to be mastered. Obviously you can pick these up at any time you feel fit, but for me this method allows you to make the absolute most of Shamir's strong early performance and puts her in the weaker classes for as little time as possible at the most convenient times for it. Once you have got these, honestly Shamir is pretty close to her peak performance. The only things left to do are push her bows up to grab some useful skills there and raise her authority for better battalion access. As mentioned previously, her starting high bow rank makes her one of the most viable candidates to reach S+, and gain access to bow fare for a second dose of the skill. With many other units not being able to do this until very late in the game, Shamir can do it relatively early on, meaning her performance in Sniper excels noticeably over other candidates. As far as classes go, Sniper is her best choice throughout the game. One thing Shamir really lacks is strong killing tools of her own, she doesn't get access to something like point blank volley or swift strikes, so Sniper's Hunter's Volley really helps provide that for her. When the game progresses, Shamir will start to be outclassed by other units, but she still maintains a very deadly player phase threat capable of taking out many foes with ease. For me, her ideal endgame skill setup is Death Blow, Hit Plus 20, Bow Fair, Bow Prowess, and Bow Crit Plus 10. One thing that's commonly noted, particularly when people have done 0% runs, is by making use of her might support, death blow, hunter's volley, and the second dose of bow fare, Shamir is able to take out endgame enemies as long as she gains at least one point of strength from her base. This really goes to show how much power she comes with and is able to pack into her class. All in all, Shamir is a unit who requires very little and gives back so much. In terms of investment to reward, she is up there with the best in the game. Being able to perform effectively whilst not needing investment is a great attribute, however it is hard to deny that Shamir would love to have a higher ceiling if investment was put into her. For example, Point Blank Volley might allow her to see more success as a Bow Knight, or Swift Strikes or Vengeance could let her transition into a Falconite and be more effective there. Again, her being low investment is great, but she doesn't get a massive amount of rewards from pumping her skills up, and if she did that would be an improvement. Being able to perform effectively with low investment doesn't have to come with the caveat that you get little benefit from high investment, but in this instance I would argue it does. However, what we are describing here is the difference between a unit who is excellent and one who is outright broken. It's a very minor complaint, and Shamir is still excellent in spite of this. She is a bit of an odd unit, as it's not necessarily what she gets that really makes her stand out, but when she gets it, and by utilising this, she is able to be an incredible asset to any team throughout her entire availability, and is absolutely up there as one of the strongest units, even within the strong cast that Three Houses offers. I hope this helps you maximise your use of Shamir. If you want more information on upcoming videos to add some input of your own, or just for more general channel information, check out the Discord, a link to this is in the description below. Thanks for watching.